Greetings loved ones and welcome back to my channel. How the hell are ya? It's Thanksgiving today and I figured I would just film some things that I'm making and I asked on my Twitch last night, I was like, you know, I'm gonna be filming this on the day while I'm actually real time making the things. So would you guys still watch it if it was uploaded say a couple days after Thanksgiving. You can still use these recipes throughout the holiday season, you know, but um, it won't be up on Thanksgiving. I will be eating and stuffing my face on the day. And everybody said, yeah, I'll still heck and watch it. So here I am heck and filming it. And I'm really excited because I'm making a seitan loaf, which I've actually already made a video making while answering themed questions on my Patreon. And I just wanted to show you guys on here today as well because it's just such a great sustainable staple to have, especially if you're vegan or vegetarian. Like all of those meat substitutes generally come in plastic. So I'm just gonna show you how to make it plastic lists. You just store it in the freezer, can use it whenever you want. But today I'm going to be doing like a light rub on the outside and kind of making this recipe my own a little bit and tweaking it slightly. But um, I have a handful of other recipes I'm going to be making as well. So this is the list. A loaf of seitan with a nice rub over it. The next thing is roasted root vegetables with mashed potatoes on the side with a red wine shallot gravy. Mm, can't wait for that one. And then a sweet and spicy cornbread as well. And for dessert, we're having pumpkin pie with homemade whipped cream. And the pie is also homemade. I made it last night and I'm not gonna be showing you the process for the sake of time in this. I'm, I have enough to show you today, you know? And also because it was already made into a video. I followed Maddie Bragg's The Perfect Pumpkin Pie Recipe video. Honestly, I am so here for Maddie Bragg from beauty guru to chef. And I watch pretty much all of her recipe videos. So I made the pumpkin pie last night. I'll show it to you. All we'll have to make today is the homemade whipped cream. I will say I did kind of frick up the crimping process. So did Maddie in her video, she said. And I just made my crust a little bit too small. I kind of like didn't shape it to the outer rim of the pan, but that all aside, this is my first pumpkin pie. It's a learning experience, you know? But anyways, intros aside, I just wanted to say, hey, wanted to make some vegan and vegetarian recipes for you today to make throughout the holiday season and wow, your family. Yes, stay at home Thanksgiving for two, baby. Let's get into it. This is a holiday special. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna quickly show you the overview of this recipe. This is my seitan recipe I'm gonna be using if you want to screenshot it and make it yourself. Um, this is from the Hot For Food cookbook, Vegan Comfort Classics. One of my faves, for sure. So this is the seitan. The next two recipes I'm going to be making come from the Southern Vegan cookbook from Lauren Hartman, and it's going to be the roasted root vegetables with mashed potatoes and red wine shallot gravy. This is the recipe if you would like to take a little screenshot, and then it's continued. The gravy recipe is continued on the next page so you'll need to screenshot this as well. And then this is the sweet and spicy cornbread recipe that I am very stoked for. It's a pretty simple recipe, there you go. Take a little screenshot, baby. All right, let's start with the seitan though because um, it's the highest cook time. That's something that you really gotta keep in mind, all right? If you hear any football in the background, it's because we're watching a football game. <laughs> Anyways, let's get into it. So we're going to start with our dry ingredients being the vital wheat gluten, nutritional yeast, spices, and herbs. So we're gonna do three cups vital wheat gluten. This is what makes it what people call wheat meat. <laughs> It's great. It's a great consistency. I really prefer this over tofu as a meat substitute. It's fantastic. Seitan is the friggin' best. So we have our three cups vital wheat gluten. Next, this is where I kind of switch up the recipe a little bit. Ma'am? Oh my god, you scared the shit out of me. Oh my god. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Making right. seitan. What's up with you? Will you put it in the oven for this this time, do you think? Sure. Okay guys, so this is where I get a little crazy with it. Instead of putting in the quarter cup of nutritional yeast that it calls for, I just put, I don't know, maybe two tablespoons in at the bottom of that there. But then I take our lion's mane mushroom powder that we grew. Well, Finley grew the mushrooms and then ground them down. And I fill the rest of the quarter cup with this and then oyster mushroom powder as well. 
<laughs> this is obviously super optional. I know not everybody has powdered mushrooms in their home, but this is just this is just what we do, all right? So, quarter cup of that, little nutritional yeast at the bottom, little, little powdered mushrooms, baby. Now, we follow the rest of the recipe as planned. Two teaspoons onion powder, and then all other seasonings you put in a teaspoon of. Sea salt, celery salt, smoked paprika, garlic powder, dried thyme, dried oregano, dried basil, ground mustard, as well as ground pepper. And you know what to do, the big whisk. Okay, now we do our wet ingredients. Contrary to popular belief, this is neither cold brew nor cashew milk. This is truly the story of a sustainable household <laughs> is all of this stuff is just labeled and I reuse jars and jars for different things. But I'm gonna be putting in three cups of some vegetable stock I made. The recipe calls for a quarter cup of vegetable oil, but I'm using avocado oil. And generally, I mean, I've made this recipe with olive oil and avocado oil and both have been perfectly fine. Now for two tablespoons of soy sauce, two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, and one tablespoon of tomato paste. Wow. <laughs> now we whisk all this together. You just wanna make sure that your tomato paste isn't in some sort of a blob somewhere at the bottom. And now, you guessed it, we combine the two. Disclaimer before you do this, do not leave it. Keep mixing and mixing and mixing it because liquid activates the vital wheat gluten and it'll get really elastic if you don't continuously mix it. So you don't want to have a rubbery consistency. She's just gotta be constantly moving around in there. We're just gonna make it nice and well combined. All right, now we are going to dump it out onto our foil. It says to do it on a clean work surface, but I've made this multiple times and I never think that it's worth it to move it to a knead on a certain surface and then just put it in foil immediately after. So it's like, why not just knead it on the foil until you start to shape it into a little bit of a log. Might flip that bad boy over. When I've made field roast recipes, they tie this off with cheesecloth or twine or something to make it look like a real roast. So you could do that, but I don't really care to just give it a couple of kinks in it. You know, it already has enough character as it is, being a seitan log. And now I'm going off book, off recipe, and I'm gonna be doing a little bit of a rub. So I'm gonna add in here a little bit of homemade meat rub. I literally just got this recipe off the internet. And I'm saying a very, very little bit, like a little spoonful or something. And then Chinese five spice over it. This has such a licorice smell because of the anise. And now just gonna kind of season her over it. Kind of massage it in, rub it in on the outside. Flip her over again, do it on the back. Now we wrap her. Wrap her tightly as you would a burrito or yourself into a sort of blanket after a long day. You're going to want to roll it like so. At least that's what I personally do. And then I start stuffing the sides in. Stuff it, stuff it, stuff it. Kind of make it more taut with the foil on either side, stuffer, stuffer. Grab one side, kind of just crunch it together like that. Stand her up, punch her down. And then crunch this side closed as well. Kind of try to secure it so your seitan does not pour out of the sides on either side while it's cooking. And now you have one log of sweet, sweet seitan Ready to bake at 350 for 90 minutes, baby. While it's in the oven, I'm taking a break to have a Zoom call with my family. Several bad puns later. Alrighty, folks. While I was on Zoom, I forgot to film it, but I just did the big chop. But in here, we got some chopped sweet potatoes. Uh, we got parsnips, homegrown beets, a homegrown onion, garlic, 
and some little tiny carrots that I also grew, but they're so small. I'll put in some footage of me harvesting the stuff that I did grow, but the rest of it, it's just store-bought. And now that all of this is on the baking sheet, I am going to drizzle it with a little bit of oil, pepper, a teaspoon of salt, and a teaspoon of thyme. And the recipe doesn't call for this, but it simply would not be roasted root vegetables for me personally without rosemary. So I'm gonna go harvest some, add it on here. Let's do... Happy Thanksgiving, pigs, I hear you. Yeah, I hear you, Peach. I see you. Yeah, pretty girls. Hi, pretty girls. All right, so my secret ingredients are Miss Rosemary. I will be kind of just loosely breaking up and freeing it. Let's do a little bit of sage as well because I already have some over here waiting to be used that I grew. So we'll do a little bit of sage. All right, now we do the big toss. Personally, I prefer to toss with my hands compared to, I don't know, using some kind of a big spoon to knock them all around. Oh, I forgot to say that the recipe did not call for beets, but I didn't have enough carrots to fill out the recipe and I wanted to use some homegrown beets, so why not throw them in? I'm still waiting on the seitan to finish baking at 350 before I can raise it to 375 for the roasted root vegetables. So in the meantime, I'm going to peel my potatoes for the mashed potatoes. When I made my pies, I filled this up to the brim. Remember that? Yeah. Do you want me to double it? Yeah. I don't have the extra left. That was delicious. We're gonna double yeah. it. Alrighty, the seitan is ready. I switched pans at one point so I could have this pan go in here. And these are gonna go to 375 for 25 minutes. I'm going to allow my seitan loaf to cool a little bit before I handle it. And I am currently making the mashed potatoes. One pair of pants later. All right, folks, I'm back and I've changed. The whole fit is thrifted, baby. And my earrings are from at Trailer Parks on Instagram. <laughs> I got this necklace from a subscriber as well. Either that or maybe Silence Hippie gave it to me. Sasha on here. I don't remember. I don't fucking remember. Anyways, let's get after it. The roasted veggies have come out. I'm just gonna keep them kind of warm on the stove top a little bit over here. And we are going to start our red wine shallot gravy. All of these are for the cornbread. By the way, there's a lot going on in the kitchen. I'm gonna bring you over. My eyes are watering. Okay, add the shallots to half a cup of melted butter over medium high heat. While we got this going, just got a couple more minutes. I'm gonna hand mash my taters. I didn't thrift this masher for nothing. I'm glad that I doubled this recipe. I used six pounds instead of three pounds, courtesy of Mr. Finley. Great recommendation, baby. You said to double the mashed potatoes. And just so I finish these, up. I'm gonna add in half a cup of vegan butter and I'm using real milk instead of non-dairy milk and coconut cream. So I'm going to add in about a cup of milk from our neighbor Athena's farm. A little salt to taste. I'm gonna keep it low on the salt for right now because I can always add more later. And dairy is rather salty as is and I learned that in my night routine video. Even though I doubled the amount of potatoes, the amount of liquid that I added in the original recipe, like not doubled, seems like the best scenario. So I'm just gonna keep it like that so it's not super liquidy. I was gonna add more just because I was like, oh shit, I have to double it. Why do that if no need? Mmm, love her. Gonna need some more salt though, some more pepper. I personally like to do a little sprinkle of nutmeg. And those taters are ready to just hang out for a little while. Keep warm. Okay, now our shallots are browning. Gorgeous darling. Gorgeous darling. Wow. Add the flour. We will need a quarter cup. Coat the shallots in the flour. Add the broth. Two and a half cups. One, two and a half. 
Now we'll add in a quarter cup of red wine. I'm using 19 Crimes Cab Sauve. It's fantastic. I love to drink it just for myself, so I'm gonna pour myself a little glass. She's starting. Why not, you know? I've been cooking all day. And then I'll add in a tablespoon of balsamic and we'll start whisking. It says, make sure there are no lumps of flour. I don't see any. Sorry for the tragedy that is my stove top. We'll clean it later. You know, there's a lot going on today. Oh my God, that was almost so bad. Now we're gonna add in a little bit of thyme, little pepper, a little salt to taste. My hair is almost going over there, shit. And we're gonna simmer it for 10 to 15 minutes. And now let us start our next project. All right, folks, we're going to sift together the flour, baking powder, baking soda, chili powder, cayenne pepper, smoked paprika. All right, so that's what needs to go through the sifter. A cup of flour, a tablespoon of baking powder, a teaspoon of baking soda, a teaspoon of chili powder, half a teaspoon of smoked paprika, half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper, and then we don't need our sifter anymore. And we will just stir in a cup of cornmeal, a half a cup of sugar, and a teaspoon of salt. Mix this together. Now this is how we make the vegan egg, is we mix in two tablespoons of flax meal with three tablespoons of water. And we'll wait for this to thicken for three to five minutes. Okay guys, my camera died, so I've switched up the angle a little bit. But in here, I have a cup of milk, a third a cup of oil, and a quarter cup of maple syrup. And I'm gonna combine it into the flax egg mixture. I know the angle's not great, I'm gonna change it. There's just a lot going on in the kitchen right now. So I'm combining all of my liquid ingredients, pouring it into my dry ingredients, and doing the big stir around till completely combined. This is what our batter's looking like right now for our cornbread. Now we add in our cup of corn and stir to combine completely. And I have this dish here, it's kind of like casserole dish and I have oiled it, so I'm going to pour in my batter now. And we're going to cook this at 400 for 20 to 25 minutes. I'll check on it at 20, and now I'm gonna take a sip of wine. For the fact that that was my last thing that I'm throwing in, everything else just needs to be warmed. Okay guys, I put the cornbread in for 20 minutes and it was perfect, look at that golden crispy brown. She's looking stunning. I'm gonna let it cool a little bit. I've moved most of my gravy into my gravy boat. I think I'm just gonna serve the mashed potatoes in the pot because I don't really wanna just transfer them to a mixing bowl. I don't have any like fancy schmancy good looking serving bowls for them. And then in here we have Mr. Finley's goose warming it was stuffed with citrus. Our seitan is warming and those veggies. And I'm just gonna let that warm for I don't know, probably two more minutes, and then we will serve everything. I also just made homemade whipped cream. Mmm, delicious. That's for the pumpkin pie. One eternity later. All right, folks, here she is. We have cornbread. We have Miss Satan loaf surrounded by roasted veggies, mashed potatoes, red wine shallot gravy, pumpkin pie for dessert with homemade whipped cream, and a farm-raised bird from our friend Athena. Can we get the cart? <laughs> it is time to dine. Oh my god. Bone apple tip. Wow, that is a real treat, baby. Really? So freaking good. Would you say it's the best pumpkin pie you've ever had? I would say it's the best pumpkin pie I've ever had. Yeah. Yes! We decided to just go right in for dessert because why slow down? Right? Mm-hmm. So good. I understand why you gotta whole roast the pumpkin, not get it from the can. There's just something about a homegrown pumpkin pie. This is Maddie Bragg's. Mm-hmm. Mm. Maddie Bragg's perfect pumpkin pie. Mm-hmm. She was right. It's a 10 out of 10. Hello, folks. We just had an astonishingly wonderful meal, and um, this is still my first glass. I'm still making my way through. Finley was a big fan of the cornbread, especially. I was a fan of everything. It was fucking great. And the pie? 
the pie blew us away. Wow, it was simply best part. incredible. Whipped cream was great, great addition. It was all great. And I just wanted to say that I hope you guys enjoyed this. We've just been listening to a little jazz, just telling each other what we're grateful for. And I gotta say I'm grateful for you. I'll say it right now. I don't care. I don't care about anything. I, I can tell you to your face. I love you, all right? Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, please give it a big thumbs up for me. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already. Ring that notifications bell if you'd like to be notified when I upload. You can become a patron of mine if you want to support my earnings for this month. I upload a ton of content to there every single month. And until my next video, stay smiling. <laughs> Bye guys. Happy holidays, brothers.